YouTube, welcome back. So yesterday, you saw us open up the Ursula's Return Treasure Trove from Lorcana, and today, we have this beauty. We have the Illumineers Quest Deep Trouble Co-op game. Play alone or team up with a friend to defeat Ursula. So... Here's what's going to happen. First of all, I want to say a special thank you to Black Moon Games in West Leb, New Hampshire for allowing me to pre-order this stuff. Thank you so much. I appreciate it because now I can actually do this and show you guys what this is. So this, this is the game plan. We're going to open this up. We're going to take a look at this. We're going to see all the different things that are inside of this. Other than the one thing we're not allowed to look at until we win. And then tomorrow, tomorrow... On this YouTube channel, there will be me and my co-host, Newt. On the podcast, we will be playing this and we will be winning. That's it. We will be winning. So, free Lorcana from Ursula's grasp. With unprecedented power, and Ursula Glimmer has unleashed her wrath across the realm of Lorcana. It's up to you and your fellow Illumineers to band together using your Disney Lorcana TCG decks and defeat the sea, which... Once and for all. So, there's an Ursula scenario deck. Ursula plays by her own rules and continually sends entangled glimmers to do her bidding. Her special 50 card deck is built from all new cards that can only be used in a Lumineer's quest game. Boom. We get two player decks. Choose from four difficulty levels to play as a group or attempt this quest alone. Two 60 card Lorcana decks are included, built with cards seen in sets from the first chapter all the way through Ursula's Return. Um, so you get one oversized Ursula card, one Ursula scenario deck, one pre built, uh, two pre built decks, two oversized double sided battleground cards. Okay, so this must be the battlegrounds here. Uh, a playmat. A draw token, uh, an Ursula draw token, a playmat, three lore tracker counters, 29 damage counters, one secret victory card, and the rules sheet. The rules sheet is the big one because I want to look at that, and that's the thing we're going to go over the most here because we're going to talk about how we're going to do this. And then, like I said, in the podcast episode tomorrow, you guys will watch as me and Danute challenge Ursula to take back uh, the realm of Lorcana. And as always with these, they're just incredibly difficult to open. Um... I don't know why they make these so difficult to open. Uh, I can only imagine uh, collector collectors have problems with this because I, not a collector collector, just a regular old collector, um, I'm having problems with this, and I had problems with the with the gift set too. I recently got a uh, I recently got a gift set. You guys will be seeing eventually here um, that I'll upload of uh, Into the Inklands. Um, I found it at a local Target. Um, I'm trying not to rip this, but I have a bad feeling <laughs> that I will. So you know what? We're gonna do this. Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop this, stop the recording real quick, so I can open this, and then we'll be back. Okay? Okay. <sighs> okay. After manhandling this for about three to four minutes, after I got done recording, or after I did the first recording, there, we finally opened this. These are so difficult to open. It's, it's ridiculous. Okay, so here we go. So this is all, all of the stuff that we're going to get in this. Boom. Okay. So there's nothing left in the box now. So there's the empty, sh the empty husk of the box. So here we go. Okay, so let me flip this over real quick. Okay, so. Let's see exactly what we have here. Okay, so let's try to not, try to not rip anything, break anything, destroy anything. Boom, 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 boom. Ooh, boom. Okay, and now we can open up this side part here, and go like this, go like this. Okay, so, first things first, we have all of these special counters, all these special things right here. Right, boom, boom, all the damage counters that we could ever want. Look at all the damage counters, look at them all. You ever need damage counters? Boom, this is what you do, you buy one of these, you get all the damage counters in the world. All of them. Literally, there's a lot of damage counters. Alright, so, there's that though, so now... <laughs> Uh, let's take a look here. So this is the play mat, I'm assuming, then. Ursula's play area, the row. Okay. Interesting. So I'm just going to put that there for right now. Okay. So we have Ursula's deck. And then we have the two decks that we get. 
So, I'm going to take a look at the decks. We're going to take a look at the decks. We're going to do the things. And we're going to see what we have here. So, this is the deck that I will be using tomorrow. My friend Danute will be playing with whatever deck he wants to play with. But this is the one that I'm going to be using because this is the one I wanted to use. And this is the Broom deck. Okay, so we get Yen Sid. Two for a one three. He's a powerful sorcerer. When you play this character, if you have a character named Magic Broom and play, you may draw a card. While you have two or more Broom characters and play, this character gains plus two lore. That's the main reason why. And then we get Mickey. Boom. Mickey Mouse, Playful Sorcerer, 5 for a 3-4, with 2 lore, shift 3, resist 1. When you play this character, dam deal damage to chosen character equal to the number of broom characters you have in play. You get, is sensing a theme here? Alright, so then we get Ursula. Ursula. I'm just going to fly kind of through some of these. A rare Jafar, interesting. Okay. Magic Broom. Magic Broom. Magic Broom. So this Magic Broom is a 6, 3-3. Three, three. When you play this character, if you have a Sorcerer in play, you may play... You may exert chosen opposing character they cannot ready at the start of their turn. Magic Broom with Rush. When you play this character, you may shuffle all Broom cards from your discard into your deck. It's kind of a ma That's kind of a nasty little bring back card. Uh, Magic Broom. Bucket Brigade. 2 for 2-2, two, two, 1 lore. When you play this character, you may shuffle a card from your discard into... The into that player's uh, deck. Look at all the brooms. Look at them all. Yes, yeah, so like I said, this is the deck I will be playing tomorrow. Uh, Magic Broom, Illuminary Keeper. One for a one two. Whenever you play another character, you may banish this character to draw a card. Magic Broom, three for two four. Just a very simple, just Magic Broom. Nothing fancy going on here. Mickey Mouse, Wayward Sorcerer. This is from the first set. It is a super rare. Four for a three four. You may pay one less to play broom characters. Whenever one of your broom characters is banished in a challenge, you may return that card to your hand. Oh, Peppa Madrigal. Okay. Five for a one five. When you play this character, you may exert chosen opposing character. The character uh, cannot ready uh, until unless they're at a location. All right. Second star to the right. We just pulled this in a, in, a, in a trove recently. Charges a chosen player draws five cards. Friends on the other side. Like I guess I'm just gonna kind of th th kind of go through this unless I see something that I wanted to talk about. Uh, so sorcerer's hat, Triton's tr Triton's trident, Ursula's cauldron, beast, beast, Benja, couple Benjas. All right, Lithos, the rock titan, magic broom, aerial cleaner. They gain evasive. So now you have an evasive brooms. So it's steel and it's uh, sapphire. No, sa no, uh, um, 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 sapphire, sapphire. I think purple, steel and purple. Uh, Magic broom, brigade commander, two six with a resist one. Uh, it's a super rare. This character gains plus two strength for each other character named Magic Broom you have in play. Oh my lord, Pyros, Magic Broom. <sighs> this is gonna be awesome. I'm so excited for this, Raya. Oh wow, that's the that's the that's the super rare Raya. Wow, okay, that's from okay. So it's set four. I wonder if they show what set, like actually show what set they're from. Oh, they do two. Cause this is two. This is charge. I know charge is from two. The mob song. Yep, that's from four. Let the storm rage. Two, two. Smash. Deal three damage. Pick a fight. And then we have Strength of Raging Fire and there. Okay, so interesting. So the first, like I said, so the first deck that you get is a Broom deck. Of course, there's some extra stuff in there. But the main thing, though, is broom in, doing Broom Boy stuff with Yen Sid and Mickey. This is the deck that I will be playing tomorrow. I'm very excited to play this deck. This is one of the reasons why I wanted to buy this. Other than the fact that I wanted to show you guys this and, and, and have this, I also thought that co-op, a co-op card game, I feel like, is a very unique thing. I don't think we've had a co-op card game before. Could be wrong about that. But, um, yeah. So, uh, Piglet. Super Rare Piglet from the third set. So this is from Ants the Inklands. I actually just pulled another one of these a little bit ago. However, though, it doesn't have all this cool, uh, cool, uh, around it. With all the ink and the tentacles and stuff. And then this is the main card. This is the big boy card out of this whole thing. Mulan, or at least from what we know. Mulan. Six. There are two six. Two lore. Shift five. When you play this character, if you use Shift to play her, she gains plus three strength this turn. So now she is a 5-6. 
During your turn, whenever this character deals damage to another character in a challenge, deal the same amount of damage to up to two other chosen characters. So if you deal two damage to something, but like normally, you now deal two damage to two other characters. So you can you can attack a lot of the board with Mulan. Rare Hades from the first set. Okay. Cobra Bubbles. Hades. Again. Weird how it went. Hades, Bubbles, Hades. Uh, he, he. 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 Mulan with support. Mechanic I feel like we don't see a whole lot anymore. Uh, super Rare Minnie Mouse. Okay. 5 for a 1-5. When you play this character, banish chosen opposing character. Rapunzel. Raleigh. More support. Uh, Tinkerbell. Bruno's Return. We're not allowed to talk about him, though. I was told that by someone once. Lost in the Woods. Oh, the, old, the good old Dingle Hopper. I remember having a Dingle Hopper once. Lantern. All right, now we get into the into the into the ruby part of this. And we get super goof, super goof. Uh, four for two, four with rush. When this character challenges, you gain two lore, two super goofs. All right, regular old Hercules before he was Hercules, but he's still Hercules. Con. Okay, Lumineer. Uh, other characters gain plus one strength. Maui as a whale. Okay, four for an eight eight, rare. This character can't ready at the start of your turn. Tap to ready this character, you can't quest for the rest of the turn. Alright. That's kind of wild. I feel like that's... Mm, I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, Mulan. Especially for only one lore. You get from that? There's probably something that you gotta do with that. Another Mulan. So two Mulan tar Two early play Mulan targets here for shift. With a one and a two. Um, Namari. Okay. Namari is a rare. I know Namari has a... I think it's a legendary in... Uh, in... Uh, Rise of the Flood, uh, Floodborn. It's actually one of the cards I actually really want. Uh, Scar. The Fiery Usurper. Teka. I, I feel like... I I have no idea. I genuinely have no idea. I just said, I just said Teka. Just because that's what I think it is. 6 for an 8, 6. Reckless. So it can't quest, but it's just going to challenge. And it's a super rare. So let me know how to say that. Tika? Tika. Dragonfire. Dragonfire. Uh, Medallion Weights. And the Vital Sphere. All right, so kind of a cool deck. Very interesting. I'm not sure how it actually, how it's actually supposed to play. Like the other one is very simple for me because it's a broom deck, right? But the big thing with this one, honestly, the big thing with this one is literally just getting the Mulan card, because this card right here is unreal. If you have a deck based around Mulan or just about just dealing down damage, just boom, boom, boom. That's it. That's it right there. Okay, so, so now we got a couple different things. So first off, before I get into her deck, I'm gonna open up. Not, I'm gonna open up this. What is this? This is okay. So I got three cards here. Let's see what we got here. What do we got here? We have Ursula herself as a giant Ursula, the ruler of Lorcana, with nice little foiling on it as well. That's kind of crazy. How big? How? How, how, how cool that looks. Alright, so then we get this. This is the two, like, battlegrounds. Or, no, four battlegrounds. Four? There's four battlegrounds here. Okay, so realm. Oh, this is the difficulty. Okay, so this is the difficulty stuff. So we have a dark realm. This is a normal difficulty. Uh, player abilities. Lore cast effects. One, chosen character gains... Whoa, hold up a sec. Lore cast effect. One, chosen character gets plus two this turn. Two, chosen character gets plus one resistance this turn. Three, each player except Ursula draws a card. Okay. So that's normal. So here's easy. So I should have read easy first. The encounter. Ursula doesn't draw additional cards for lore each turn. Okay. So this is one that we're going to be playing on tomorrow because we're just going to be learning how to do this. The encounter. Battleground. Remove up to two damage from chosen character. Ready or exert chosen character. Chosen player draws two cards. Okay. So this is the hard one. This is called the layer. Uh, Ursula draws one more card each turn. Uh, deal one damage chosen character for one. Two is ready chosen character. And three is each player except Ursula puts the top card of their deck into their inkwell face down and exerted. And then let's take a look at how ridiculous infinite wrath is. Infinite wrath. Difficulty extreme. 
Ursula draws one more card each turn. Whenever a character of Ursula's is banished, she returns that card to her hand. Ursula discards a card at random to lore. Okay, very intriguing. Very intriguing. Like I said, I'm not sure how um, any of this is supposed to work. That's one of the things we will be finding out here in a little bit when we get to uh, get to it. So then there's this. This is kind of a cool thing. So only the victors shall unseal this product and claim the prize within or this treasure becomes property of the sea witch Ursula. So, this is the, this is the deal. If we win, of course I'm going to open this. It's that simple. We win, we open this. So you guys are going to have to wait and hope that we win. Um, okay, so now we have the actual play guide here, it looks like. Um, so, yeah, you know what, let's go, let's do this first. Before we do the play guide, let's take a quick look at her deck, which is very cool because it actually has is a gold background to it. So this deck can only be used in this, in this game. This deck cannot be used anywhere else. Really cool gold background. So, uh, the Hexwell Crown, item, perks, a power, draw a card. Ursula's Contract. Okay. For zero as well. Opposing players can't use the Battleground abilities. At the start of your turn, banish this item to gain three lore. It's going to be very interesting to read the rules of this. Ursula's Stolen Trident. Tap it to gain one lore. It costs zero. Wow. That is cool looking. It's like an evil Anna. Oh, if, is this how all the cards are going to look? Because if so, that's going to be awesome. Uh, Anna, evasive, so it can't be, it can only, uh, characters with evasive can challenge this character. 5, 6, 2 lore. Bruno Madrigal, 2 for a 4, 2 for a 4, 4! When you play this character, each opposing player puts the top 3 cards of their deck into their discard. Oh wow, just a mill, alright. Captain Hook, 5 for a 7, 4 for 2. Floatsum, 5, 5, bodyguard, Ursula's Sentry. This character enters play exerted. Okay. Gaston. Two for a two four. Another. <laughs> he. He has evasive. So Hercules. Wow, a ton of stuff on this as well. During your opponent's. During the opposing player's turn, they may pay. They may together pay three lore to banish this character. Oh, wow. That's kind of cool. Jafar, 7 for a 9-9. Nine, nine. No wonder Ursula is so strong. God. Mad Hatter. Oh my god, the Mad Hatter. And this also says Q1, which means we're going to get more quests here. That's going to be cool. Magicka Dispel. Mini. Prince Eric. The Shark, or just Shark. The Shark. Uh, Tamatoa. Triton's Daughters for zero. They're two, three. Damn. Capsize. Choppy Waters. Crushing Wave. Entangling Magic. Fortunate Hit. Lash Out. Lightning Storm. Each opposing player loses three lore. Damn. Banish all characters and locations with a cost of two or less. Damn! Tentacle swipe. Tsunami. Banish all opposing Damn. Return all exerted characters to their players. Wow. Wow. Okay. One, this looks really cool. This deck looks just looks cool. I will say that right now. Okay, so now this is the this is the big thing now. So now we have the rules. So I'm gonna read through this. I'm going to read through this, and then we'll see what happens. Okay, so here. All right, so. Uh, Illuminator's Quest, Deep Trouble, with unprecedented power. Okay, so I already read all that. Um, before it's too late. So, overview. So, here's the overview. Deep Trouble is a race for lore, with the players united against Ursula as her powers increase. Don't underestimate her, as she plays by her own rules and with her own special deck. The players use standard Disney Lorcana TCG decks, either one of the two pre-built decks that are included, or one of their own decks. So that's really kind of cool. So you can literally just do this with any deck you want. But if you want to, though, you can use the decks given. Like I said, I'm going to use the, one of the decks given, and uh, Danute will use one of his decks that he has. Um, take on Ursula alone or team up with a friend. Others can even bring their own decks to expand your team to 
three or four players, all decks must follow the normal Disney Lacana deck, build deck building rules. Deep Trouble rules are explained here. Otherwise, all normal Disney Lacana rules are that. Uh, but da -da 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 -da. okay, so basically, all the normal rules are all the normal rules apply, other than whatever normal rules we have here. So, objective: working together, the players race for sufficient lore to stop Ursula from cementing her rule on Lacana. If she reaches 40 lore before each of the players has 20, each of the players have 20. So we both have to have 20. At the same time, the Great Illuminari and all of its secrets will be hers. Wow. Based on the number of players facing Ursula, place her draw counter on a playmat as indicated below. The first time Ursula reaches the listed lore total, move her draw counter up one to show that she'll draw an extra card from that point on she can gain each bonus only once and keeps it even if her law law lore falls below the listed thing so if we have so we have two so she's going to draw two cards at 10 and at 30 draw one more card okay at 20 draw okay i think i understand that uh choose a battleground so we, of course we're choosing the very first battleground we're choosing the easy one the encounter uh choose a battleground a place that, where everyone can see it if your battleground has ursula draw an additional card each turn be sure to move up her draw counter play on easy or normal for the first few games so you have a chance to get used to the rules and for the quest fair in ursula's scenario deck find uh the ursula's stolen trident card and place it face up in her play area as the first card in a, the row then shuffle her deck and place it face down in the marked spot on her playmat. Place the lore counters, the lore trackers at zero on her playmat. One for Ursula and one for each of the players facing her. Each player shuffles their deck and draws their cards normal. Altering hands is allowed, but the sea witch doesn't bother. Ursula takes first turn. She isn't one to sit around on her tentacles. Unlike in a standing game, she'll draw cards on her first turn. Okay. So as you can see here, here's a look at what the of the what the mat will look like. So there's her inkwell, Ursula herself. There's the discard scenario deck. So I'm assuming that's just her normal deck. There's that there. Here's the lore stuff all the way down to the bottom and the hand. Okay. So there's the battlegrounds. So battlegrounds uh, has four increasingly different battlegrounds. So that's kind of cool. So depending on what you want to do and how difficult you want it to be, you can pick a different battleground. Um, each battleground has one or more abilities the players can use on their turn by paying the listed lore cost to do this. A player reduces their lore total by the amount listed for the ability they want to use, moving their lore tracker to the new total. Choose carefully. Each ability can only be used once per turn. The hand and the extreme battle, the hard and extreme battlegrounds have special rules for Ursula in addition to the player's abilities. The hard battleground gives her an extra card draw every turn. And the extra ones, well... It's extreme, so don't say we didn't warn you. Think you're ready to try the extreme battleground? Take our advice and come to the field prepared with decks you've built specifically for this quest. That's the thing. Like, I could definitely see people making decks specifically for this, and I think that would be very interesting to see. Okay, so Ursula's turn. Uh, follow the steps below on Ursula's turn, which works differently than a normal turn. Her play decisions are built into the rules. So her deck will usually be able to run itself. What? Ready all of Ursula's cards. Start this turn. Effects happen. Resolve the row. Resolve the row of characters and items Ursula has in play from the player's left to their right. If an item has an ability with an exert cost, Ursula exerts the card to use the ability. If a character has it in quest, they do exert them as usual. If they can't quest and have reckless, they challenge. The players choose a character of theirs that can be challenged as a defender, and the challenge proceeds normally. Otherwise, the character does nothing. Draw. One at a time, Ursula draws the number of cards indicated by her draw counter. Don't reveal these cards yet. Place them face down in a pile next to her deck. This is her hand. Um, any, cards the, any cards that return to Ursula's hand it goes into this pile. Reveal. One, a tar one at a time, Ursula reveals and acts on every card in her hand. After finishing with each one, move on to the next one until she has no cards left. Turn the card over to reveal it. Then check the amount of ink in the inkwell. Ursula doesn't have to pay ink to play cards. She just has to have that. Have it. 
Oh, if Ursula has enough ink in her inkwell to play the revealed card, she does so for free. If the card is a character or an item, place it at the end of the row. If it's an action, resolve the effects and put the card into her discard. If she doesn't have enough ink to pay the revealed card, put it into her inkwell face down. If Ursula ever runs out of cards, the next time she must draw, shuffle the cards in her discard to make her new deck. Place it in the des designated spot on her playmat and continue with her draw. Wow. There's a lot going on here. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I'm probably going to watch a video of someone else playing this because there's a lot going on here right now. Uh, special rules at a glance. Ursula. Ursula doesn't pay ink to pay cards. You only check to see if she... If she if she the amount wow you only check to see if she the amount of ink yeah bad typo there um you only check to see if she has the amount of ink that would normally be needed to play them if she doesn't that card goes to her inkwell face down if a card is revealed to ursula's hand it stays there until the reveal step and is then and is then revealed if any effects require ursula to make a choice players make that choice together resolve it as though she had done it Reminder, on Ursula's cards, you and your refer to Ursula, while opposing players refers to the players facing her. Players. All player turns happen at the same time, so you can coordinate your play and use abilities and effects on each other's characters, etc. This is especially useful for support or other effects that last until the end of your turn. Reminder, you and yours refer to an individual player, but Ursula is your only opponent. Tip. An effect on one of your cards that refers to a player can be you can be used on Ursula. Okay, and then the different symbols there, which we already know the different symbols. Um, and then what, are, what else we got here? Uh, the basics of our turn: challenging, questing, winning. You win when every player facing Ursula has 20 or more lore at the same time. Ursula wins when she has 40 or more lore, or when any player facing her must draw but has run out of cards. Wow. Um. So that's. This is this is the new thing. This is this is the Illumineers quest. I am assuming because well, this is the fourth set. I think it is. So this is my thought process. Okay, we're gonna get gift sets every single time. But once the once a story wraps up around the four the fourth set arc, we're gonna get a new quest because on the bottom of these cards here, it actually says Q one, which makes me think quest one because these say four or two or depending on which set we get. So. Like I said, tomorrow, that would be Monday, 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 we will be doing this for the podcast, me and my co-host Danu will be playing this. I am very excited to see how this goes. Like I said, there's a lot going on, so I'm probably going to be looking up a bit of stuff to see and check to make sure I know what's going on. But, the big question is, one, what do you guys think of the quest? Of everything I showed you, what do you think? What do you think? I'm intrigued to know what you guys think. Genuinely intrigued to know what you guys think. Um, I, I, like I said, there's a lot going on here. The decks are really cool. Um, but I'm just, I, I feel like we need to play and get it going to see exactly what's going on. However, though, it does seem like a lot. But that being said, though, a lot can also be very good. But we'll find out uh, later. So. Let me know down in the comments down below what you guys think. If you guys have played it, how did you guys do? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let me know, right? Let me know down in the comments down below, right? And as always, depending on where you are, morning, afternoon, even night, still trouble, stay safe, and we we we'll talk to y'all later. <gasps> Bye. I'm very intrigued to know what this is. I feel like I, I'm feeling like the ring right now from like Lord of the Rings with this, like the precious. This is the precious. Like I just I want to open it. I want to I, I want to open it, but I'm not going to. I'm not gonna. Not until we win, which we will, I think.